Well, thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, this is Drupal Migrations for Non Coders at Drupal GovCon 2020 uh, slash Drupal in Baltimore. Uh, my name is Mauricio Dinarte. My pronouns are he, him, and I go by Dinarte on, on the internet. That's my Twitter handle and my Drupal.org uh, username as well. I am from Nicaragua, beautiful country, 80 to 90 degrees all year round. So if you need to escape a cold winter, this is a pretty nice place to come. And we do have a lot of uh, nature and wild activities like watching Alaba Lake uh, in real life. So if you come here, uh, that is something that you will see in person or you can go to that website to see a, dig a digital tour of how it would look like. I collaborate with Agaric. We are a distributed company uh, based in Boston, but uh, we are all over the place. And just a, a, a note, in, with, in addition to being a development shop and a consultancy, we also provide trainings. So in October, we're going to have full day trainings about React, uh, Drupal migrations, upgrades on site building. So I invite you to check it out. Um, I am also very passionate about teaching. So last year I started this documentation project to talk about Drupal and for the last couple of months, specifically about Drupal migrations. And I usually write in English, Spanish and French. So if you speak any of those language, by all means, uh, pay us a visit. Uh, for today uh, presentation, we're going to uh, be seeing some examples of, uh, you know, running Drupal migration from scratch. And last year, I actually I wrote a, a series of articles, like 31 articles, that will teach you from the very basic, like from nothing, to understanding a lot of the different uh, concepts of the API itself. So I also uh, invite you to, to check that resource. That was a guide that I wrote to my past self to make the introduction to migrations a lot more easier. And I also produce uh, video courses uh, that we cover even more advanced materials. So also you can have a look at that. Um, I'm going to start by saying that the Migrate API in Drupal is an implementation of a design pattern form called extract, transform, and load. Uh, this is not a specific neither to Drupal nor PHP. It has existed for years. And uh, if you are familiar with this, uh, everything that you know about this pattern will apply to Drupal. If you are not familiar with it, don't worry. I'm going to give a slight introduction today, uh, but just be mindful that, you know, there are tools that, and frameworks that help with this, uh, even outside of Drupal. So what is the strike transform and load pattern? I would like to explain it given a real life example of baking bread. Let's say that we want to make some bread. So in the process, we have you know, three steps. The first one is extract, and that refers to sourcing your materials, like getting your raw materials in the case of bread, that can be wheat, water, salt, yeast, and any other thing that you're going to use eventually in the process of baking the bread. Um, in Drupal, these are provided by source plugins. So the source plugin is the one responsible for getting your data. In today's example, we're going to see how to do it from CSV files, but there are different source plugins to get, for example, for, from JSON file or XML files or uh, a, a database, for example, Drupal 6 or Drupal 7. So, you know, this is the first step, getting your data. Once all your data has been collected, uh, the second step is transformation. And in the case of red, you know, that means combining all the ingredients and after that, uh, putting them in the oven, like in the sense of, um, you know, the, the chemical, the physical process that go about uh, transforming, you know, your mixed uh, ingredients into the final product. Uh, in the in Drupal, this is accomplished by using process plugins, and the responsibility of process plugins is massaging and transforming the data from whatever you got in your source to how Drupal expect them to be. Because let's say, for example, that uh, you want to format a date, maybe in your source the data is formatted in one way, and Drupal expects something different, so you will apply a transformation uh, for that for that specific piece of data. Once the transformation process is complete, uh, it comes the load operation. And that means, uh, in the case of the example of the bread, putting the bread in a shelf 
and you have different types of bread. You know, you can uh, bake a bagel or a French uh, toast. I don't know my terminology in English, uh, but basically is that you can have different types of bread and the same idea applies uh, in Drupal. You know, when you move content into Drupal, you can have different categories. For example, uh, a user, a node, a taxonomy term, a file, an image, a media entity, a paragraph, and so on. So you will have like different categories and, uh, and that is going to be the responsibility of the destination plugin. You know, once the, transfer, the data has been transformed, the destination plugin will say, hey, uh, this is going to be used to store a node. This is going to be used to store a user and so on. And that's kind of like a, a, a high level overview of the ETL uh, process. Now, let me tell you a short story about my first migration. It was around five years ago. And by then I had been doing Drupal for about five years already. So in that time I had been doing site building, theming, module development. And I thought that a migration would be easier. I mean, I have been using Drupal and its, and, and its API for so long that, you know, I estimated the task to take a couple of hours. Well, the reality is that the task took a couple of days, if not weeks. And the reason was that when initially presented, uh, you know, with the API, with the Mario API, I was confronted with a lot of terms that I didn't understand. And, you know, the, the things that I, I just explained Back, in the then, back then, I just didn't know about, about that. And this was, you know, very strange, very foreign for me. And, you know, it was very frustrating as well. All that I wanted to do was to move content into my website. The moment that everything started to click was when I realized that all of these words that I didn't understand belong to one of the categories of the ETL process. They would be either a source, a process, or a destination plugin. Um, and how does this help to make things easier? In any migration, you can only have one source and one destination. So for example, in this uh, slide that we see 15 concepts. If I know that I only need to worry about one source and one destination, I'm okay, I can already cross out uh, eight of those. So the, the things that I need to keep in mind, the things that I need to be aware of is less. And you know, that makes things easier. Uh, for example, we might want to read from a CSV file and create notes. And that already discussed so many other things. Uh, when you write a migration, you have one source, one destination, and as many process plugins as you need. One thing that I want to clarify about this restriction is that um, every migration needs to follow that, one source, one destination. But when you are migrating like uh, for example, a full Drupal website or any other project, like when you want to move a lot of content into Drupal, you are very likely going to require not one, but many migrations. So, you know, some of those migrations might be creating nodes. Some of those migrations might be creating users. So the restriction is yes, uh, per file, one source and one destination, but in your whole migration project, you can have as many migration as needed and combine these, you know, as, as needed in general. Like you can have two four sources, five destinations uh, in different migrations, and that is totally fine. A very uh, simple example, let's say that we have a CSV file with uh, three columns, first name, last name, and department. But we, when we move this content into Drupal, we want to have a content type just with the title, uh, you know, the title field will be name and then department. And we want to put the first name and the last name together. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a process plugin to glue things together. Um, and this is basically, you know, what, what the three step process source, you know, from your CSV file process to combine the first name and the last name column, destination, um, a note. Uh, and in this particular field with a title field uh, being the, com the combination of the first name and the last name. A few things that are important to understand when we work with migrations, and you know, this is going to save you a lot of frustration down the road, is that a migration in Drupal is a two-step process. So first, you write the migration jumble definition files, but just writing the files doesn't do anything. 
After that, you need to execute them. And there are two ways to execute migration, from the command line, which is what we're going to do today, and from the user interface. Uh, and the reason that we're going to do it from the command line is because it's faster. So, uh, you know, we're going to save some time, but you know, you can also do it from the user interface. The one thing that you need to know also is that migrations in Drupal, uh, you can write them in two different ways, as code or as configuration. And we're going to see the difference uh, in the example itself. But um, let's, let's before explaining the differences between those two, I want to show you an example migration file. Like what you see on the screen, approximately um, 12 lines, that is a fully working Drupal migration. In this particular example, you can see that uh, we have an ID and a label, and the ID needs to be unique uh, in the whole system. That is how Drupal keeps track of, you know, the different migration files that you might have. Then you have a label, which is like a human readable name. And then you see source, process, and destination. These are the three uh, elements of the ETL process. In this case, the source is going to be a CSV file. We provide the file. The destination is going to be a node of type UD stuff. And the process, what we're doing is uh, to the title of my node, I am going to assign the value of the first name column that appears in my CSV. And if I were to have 10,000 records in my CSV file, I would be creating 10,000 uh, nodes. Um, now, I mentioned that you know we have this migration defined as code and migration defined as configuration. So what is the difference between these two? First, when you have a migration defined as code, that is something that will work out of the box with Drupal core. You don't need any contributed module for this type of migrations to, to work. Second, they will go, the files themselves, the migration files will go in a migrations folder in your custom module. Uh, in addition to that, the name of the file would be the ID of the migration plus YML. If you make any change to that migration, you need to reveal the cache for Drupal to detect the changes. And in order to execute them, you do it from the command line using a module called uh, Migrate Tools. The Migrate Tools modules will uh, give you the drush command needed to execute this migration. When you do migrations as configuration entities, they require a contributed module, and that is the migrate plus module. The, the location of the file is going to be different. They will go in a config install folder in your custom module. And the name of the file is also going to be different. It's going to be migrate underscore plus dot migration dot the ID of the migration itself dot YML. So the format is a little bit different. Now, because these are my uh, configuration entities, if you make any change to the file, what you need to do is sync your configuration again. So, you know, keep, keep that in mind. You can use Drush, you can use uh, the user interface, you can use, you know, any other measure, like there are some custom modules that can help you with that. But the idea is that you need to interact with the config configuration management system in Drupal. Uh, to detect any change that you make to those files. And uh, these type of migrations can be run both from the command line or from the user interface. The, the migrate tools modules gives you a user interface where you can go and click and execute the migrations. As you might see, um, there are many URLs in the presentation that those are you know, links to articles with more information about, um, about topics and I am also going to share the slides, so you will have access to all of these for reference. Um, and right before jumping into the example, I want to give some general tips about private migrations. First is that try to start from an existing working example. Um, it is easier to f if you can find on the internet something that does more or less what you need. You copy that example, you execute it to verify that it works as uh, it is supposed to. And after that, you start tweaking those examples uh, to match your specific needs. And the series of articles that I mentioned, the 31 days of migrations, 
and that comes with a repository of about 20 examples of you know different types so you know that's a, a reference that that you can use also uh, read the official documentation it, it might seem obvious but more than once i have been stuck in something and the solution was was right in the documentation and in my humble opinion the Byred API is one of the best documented uh, APIs in the whole of Drupal. Um, also, uh, pay close attention to the syntax of the YAML files. Um, these are text files that you use to write the migrations, and they are very, very sensitive to different things, one of which is white spaces. So if you have an extra white space or a missing white space, that can break the whole file. And then the migration process is going to fail, not necessarily because you have something wrong in the logic of your migration, but because the syntax of the file itself is invalid. So keep that in mind. Depending on the IDE or text editor that you use, you might install some plugins to help you with this. Another uh, recommendation is that migrate one field at a time. Let's say that I have a content type with 10 fields. If I try to write the migration all at once and something breaks, it will be hard to determine, I mean, not necessarily, but it might be hard to determine which of the 10 fields was the one producing the error. But if you go one by one, then uh, you can pinpoint where things start breaking and focus your attention on the, you know, on the current field to fix that one. Also, YAML files are regular text files that you can add to your code repository. So commit them often for the same reason. If at some point something breaks, you can use the history of the repository to go back in time to a point where things were working. And you know, after that, uh, continue fixing things as needed. Uh, also, there is no need to do everything using the Migrate API. Let's say that you need to import 20,000 nodes, and from those 20,000, 17, uh, you know, include eight cases where maybe the formatting is wrong, or you know, or something is not right uh, when you execute the operation. You can spend a lot of time, you know, trying to account for every possible edge case, or at the end of the process, you can go and manually update those 17 nodes out of the thousands that were imported automatically. So you can do that, uh, you know, after the fact, or you can also do like a manual cleanup uh, in, in the beginning of the process. So just uh, keep in mind that you don't have to do everything using the Migrate API. And last uh, but not least, seek help from the community. Uh, in Slack in particular, there is a migration channel that is super active. The Migrate maintainers are, you know, spread across the globe. So chances are that at any point in the day or night, you ask a question and a maintainer, uh, you know, will be available to help. And if not the maintainer themselves, you know, there are a lot of volunteers, myself included, that I spend time in that uh, Slack channel uh, giving support. So, you know, keep, keep those tips in, in mind. Now we're going to do a live demo. And of course, nothing can go wrong. So bear with me. Um, what I'm going to demonstrate um, is actually part of the course that I mentioned. So all the content, all the things that you're going to see here uh, comes with a repository with instructions on how to do it yourself. Um, just like go to this repository, set up the machine based on the, the commands and the information that we provide, and you will have a fully working example of you know, a Drupal migration project. Um, this is the, the interface of what you're going to get. And just for good measure, uh, before starting the explanation of, um, of writing the migration itself, I want to execute a drush command here. Uh, again, like I, I try to make things as self-documenting as possible. So when you install the module and uh, things are working, you get in the interface, the command or the different places that you should go uh, to execute the migration. So in this case, I'm going to do it from the command line, again, to save some time, but you can also do it from the interface. Uh, they tell you like, go to, you know, click this URL 
and this is the interface for running things uh, from from the admin screen. But uh, just to have a sense of what we're going to be talking today, uh, this is a, an example that goes over migrating images, paragraph, address fields, uh, dates, links, rich text documents, and so on. Uh, due to time limitations, it will not be possible to explain everything, uh, but we're going to see you know, the basics, the foundation to get you started. And after the fact, you can refer to the repository and you know, execute the migrations yourselves and study how everything works. Again, like after the migrations are run, you also get instructions on how to uh, roll them back. The rollback operation means uh, remove what was imported previously, and you go to a step one. So as you can see, it tries to be as you know, self-documented as possible so, can, so you can follow along on your own. Now, um, I'm going to be using uh, VS Code today, and the reason is because the YML plugin is, uh, is really good. So there is a free YML plugin that you can install. I think it is created by uh, and maintained by Red Hat. Uh, so it's going to you know, give a lot of information and we're going to see how it gives us warning when, do, when we do things uh, incorrectly. Just as a reference, this is a standard Drupal installation and uh, we have our custom module in this case called UD staff. We have a folder called migrations and in this, ma in this folder, we have you know, three files. We're going to follow our own recommendation. Uh, these are the final versions of the files. And we're going to start by finding something that works and modifying it. So in this particular case, I am going to copy the node migration and uh, like in the same directory and then just rename it. In this case, I'm going to say underscore init at the very end. And in this file, I am going to remove as much as possible to get you know, the bare minimum for, you know, for things to work. Uh, first, I need to rename the ID, otherwise uh, there will be a conflict between the two, between the original file and this one. For the label, it's not really necessary, but you know, just for good measure, I'm going to change the name as well to append in it at the end. And then uh, I don't need migration tags, um, I don't need source constants for the process section. I'm just going to leave it like this. I'm going to explain what this means in a moment. The destination can be left as is, and I don't need migration dependencies. So uh, this is what we saw in the screenshot before, uh, 11 lines of codes, and this is already a fully working migration. Uh, before explaining what the file itself does, I want to point out that it is super important to understand your source um, uh, of the data and your destination. In this case, we're saying that we're going to be uh, reading from a CSV file. So what is the structure of that CSV file? For that, I'm going to switch back to, the, to, to GitHub because it has a very nice uh, way to, to view CSV files, and it is this one. So basically, this is what we get, uh, different columns, staff ID, first name, last name, and so on. And this is the data that we're going to eventually use uh, for our migration. Now, uh, what are we doing here? We, we are using um, a, a plugin called CSV. This is provided by a contributed module. So you need a contributed module called Migrator CSV to be able to use this. After that, you are asked for the path. And this path is relative to the Drupal installation. So from the Drupal root, go to modules, custom, UD staff, sources, and UD staff.csv. So that file is actually locally uh, in, my, in my local file system. After that, uh, what do we want to create? We want to create uh, nodes. And the way that you do it is using a plugin called entity column node. And the default bundle refers to the machine name of the content type. 
So if you're not familiar what a machine name is, uh, I'm going to go to the website, go into structure, uh, content types. Uh, one one thing to note, I am using the quick start command that comes with Drupal 4, and sometimes the server freezes. So what you have to do is pause it and refresh it. You know, if you're using if you're using that, um, this is not likely to happen. But in my case, the server crashed and I had to restart it. So in this case, I'm going to click manage fields, and from manage fields for this particular content type, I'm going to click edit, and I and this is the machine name. So UD underscore staff, this is the value that we see uh, in the, the configuration here. And just as a general reminder recommendation, every time that you work with the Migrate API, you are going to be using machine names. So keep that in mind. After that, we have covered the source and the destination. Then we need to do the mapping. So what we're saying in the process section is that particular mapping. So on the left, you have your destination on the right, you have your source. So what this means is the destination is a node. So the title of the node should be assigned uh, whatever is stored in the first name volume of my CSV file. And as you can see, if we switch to the to GitHub again, uh, there is a column called first name. One thing that I uh, skip while explaining the source is that we need to define an IDs properties with a list of the different uh, columns. It can be one or it can be a combination of many columns that uniquely identify each record uh, in my CSV file. Why? Because the major API keeps an internal record of everything that has been imported. Um, and among other things, this is used in the rollback operation. You saw that when I executed rollback, everything uh, was deleted automatically. So. Uh, that is one of the reasons why we need to specify this ID property. And in our particular case, you know, the values here are unique for each record. If I didn't have this, for example, I could define the combination of the first name and the last name as my, as my key. It is important to uh, have your capitalization right, like uppercase and lowercase letters. And if for some reason the name of the column has a white space, like this one, you need to put them around quotes. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, another thing that I want to mention before executing the migration is that something like this, for example, will break. And what did I do? I removed the white space after the column in the key. And as you can see, the ID is already giving me some warnings, some really nice to say something is not correct. And this is the plugin that I mentioned before uh, doing you know, its work, alerting me that something is not right. So that is an invalid migration. If I put the space, that is a valid migration. Uh, if I were to, for example, all of these elements to put them here, that is an invalid migration. This is a valid migration. So you need to be mindful not only about white spaces, but also about indentation levels. Uh, you know, and this comes with practice and experience. So the first few times you might not get it right. You execute the migration, you get the error, and then you, you fix it. Or you can also like install a plugin and preemptively, uh, you know, get those hints uh, before you actually execute the migration. With that uh, being said, this is the migration file. This is the step one. The step two is running the migration. Now, to run the migration, again, we're going to do it from the uh, command line to save some time. First, because I added a new file, I added a new migration, I need to execute um, a cache reveal command for the system to detect the changes. Then I'm going to execute a MS, which means migrate status, to verify that the migration is being detected. And yes, the system sees the one that I just created. UD, staff, CSV, no init. And you see already reporting that there are three elements to process. Now, I'm going to execute this migration. It says that it works, or at least that is what it claims. And if I switch to the site, I can verify that yes, 
the table is already being populated and these are nodes being created and in this case with the name. Uh, so for, for the example, what I'm going to do is uh, concatenate or put together the first um, name. Yes? I just want to give you a um, heads up. Uh, you have about five minutes before Q&A. Okay, thank you. Uh, for the example, what we're going to do is that we're going to concatenate the first name and the last name. So how do we do that? Um, in this particular case, I'm going to go the full route. Uh, how do I do it? So normally we would go to our search engine of choice and we can say Drupal, migrate, API, process. Why process? Because remember that any transformation are the responsibility of process plugin. So by typing that I can get, you know, a sense or I hope to get a sense of what's going to happen. I'm going to click the first link. Uh, then I look for in the list. It says list of four migrate process plugins. That sounds promising. Uh, I come, uh, I start reading the list and the third element, it says concatenates a set of strings. If you're familiar with uh, computer parlance, if you want to put things together, there is a concatenate operation. So this is already what, what we need. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger and I am going to copy uh, the example like without reading anything else. And I'm going to change this. Oh, sorry. Like this. Now, uh, the, the, this is the destination. Remember, what is the destination? It's going to be the title. Uh, then indentation, plugin concat, and then your source. These are the things that you want to concatenate. So first name, and then last name. I'm literally copy pasting and making some changes to the configuration. I'm going to clip save here. Uh, because I made a change to the file, I need to clear the cache again. And if I try to run the migrate operation again, it is not going to do anything. It says uh, zero elements were processed. And this is because the migrate API, even though I change the configuration, internally it knows that the migration has been executed and that there is nothing else to migrate. So what we need to do is execute a rollback operation uh, for the elements to be deleted and do a import operation again. And now it says three elements were created. I am going to go to the site and I'm going to refresh the page to see what happens. I get a page not found error. So why? When we do a rollback operation, the Myriad API is actually deleting the nodes. And when we do an import, it is going to create new nodes. And if you are familiar with how nodes are managed in Drupal, when you delete and create, you get a new node ID. So um, that is going to be a different URL. But if we click here, uh, we can see that the information is there. The one caveat though, is that yes, I am getting the first name put together with the last name, but I think we should have a space there. Uh, I guess we were too quick uh, and we didn't do, we didn't follow the recommendation of actually reading the whole documentation, not just the, fir the first part. So if I cro scroll down a little bit more, I see that there is another configuration option for the plugin called the limiter that allows to set you know, what is going to go in between the elements to put together. Uh, by going to the configuration and then pasting that, you see uh, again the warnings from the ID. This is invalid configuration. If you go to the documentation, you see that the limiter should be at the same level of source and the same level of plugin. So, Again, keeping in mind those, those things. The spaces, indentation is super important. Uh, uh, this is going to be the end of the demo for q and I just want to show this to you. Uh, click save, remember the workflow, uh, revert the configuration, clear the cache, and import again. Now, if I go to the site, uh, you know, this, by refreshing this, I'm going to get the page not found error again because I created new nodes. But if I come to this page, um, you know, I get uh, the, the spaces in between as expected. So that is more or less uh, what you need to do. 
Uh, one thing, uh, one last thing that I want to mention is that if we go to the full example, uh, we're going to see more things like, for example, if you want to migrate a rich text uh, value field, uh, a new concept is, is introduced and these are called subfields. So in addition to in, uh, specifying what you want to migrate, you also have like uh, sub properties to, to put it like that. So in a rich text field, you uh, the value sub key uh, is going to store the text and then the format sub key is going to store the format, be basic HTML, full HTML, plain text and so, so forth. These are called sub fields. And the last things in terms of syntax, if you have a multi-value field, you can specify it like this, uh, field name, delta, and subfield, and this is how you can migrate uh, multi-value fields. But I want to open it up for questions, um, and even uh, if you have, you know, something that you would like to know in general about the API, this is a good moment to ask. Okay, so I'm gonna go through some of the comments that are in the chat. Um, so the first one was by Rob D. Um, when going from Drupal 8 to Drupal 9, do you need to migrate or is it just an upgrade? And Benji answered D8 to D9 is an upgrade. Yes, uh, you, don't, you don't need to go through, uh, you, it's, there is no need to use the migrate API to go from 8 to 9. If you are familiar of, uh, with minor version updates, like going from 8.8, seven to 8.8 to 8.9. That is a, the process that you're going to uh, do for Drupal 9. The Migrate API is going to be useful when you need to come from Drupal 6 or from Drupal 7. But starting from Drupal 8 and now moving forward, uh, even major versions are going to be way, way more easier to execute, uh, just like an update operation, not an upgrade. Okay. And the next comment is from Benji. Um, one estimate is that it is only two times as hard as a minor upgrade, like 8.7 to 8.8. .8. Um, before Drupal 8, the Migrate API was a contrib module, and it was already the best documented part of Drupal. Um, the next question from Jeff Frazier, is it still possible to start a Drush background migration from the UI, like after uploading a CSV file? This was possible in Drupal 7, but I have not found resources for this in Drupal 8 or 9. Thanks. Okay, so let me <laughs> show something. This is the website that I mentioned, and this is the 31 days of migration series. One of the article number 30 is a collection of a lot of uh, migration related uh, commands. And one of them uh, is, let me show you, you are, this one. Uh, in the migration runner sections, there is the migrate source UI module. This one allows you to configure a migration and then have a user interface when you, where you can you know, upload a CSV file and execute the migration as you configure it, like, you know, in, in my example. And uh, this is my migration configuration. So the file that I upload is going to be run, run against this configuration. And this is a functionality that uh, you can implement using the migrate source UI module. And you can come to this reference for, you know, a lot of other options that you have. Okay, so we have another question, I think, when we were looking at your YAML file. Um, why the wrapping brackets on the IDs? Uh, okay, so the reason is because IDs is supposed to be an array. Uh, by array, I mean a list of columns, and the, the, the brackets okay. represent array syntax. And now that this is mentioned, I want to bring something up. In YAML, there are different alternatives to sometimes write the same or represent the same. So an alternative to having a bracket like this is to put things in a new line, one level of indentation and start with a dash. So this that you see on the screen is equivalent to what I had before. So like for example, if I want you know, to show another example, this is an array of two elements. Another option to put this would be like this. Um, so the brackets uh, represent an array. It's just like a shorthand for, for an array. <coughs> okay, um, we have another question from Lyra Atwater. 
She says, pardon me, does anyone have the link to the GitHub repo for the examples? Uh, I'm going to paste it in, in the chat now, but uh, the, the slide and all the resources I'm going to upload to the session description in a moment. Uh, but yes, I'm pasting the link now. Okay. Uh, I see. Thank you. And um, Benji said, little known fact, YAML is a superset of JSON. Um, do we have any other questions? We have five more minutes. Um, if there are no questions, uh, I have a couple of more slides that I want to run through and then we're done, I guess. So uh, we did a demo already for the most part it work. That is not usually the case. So <laughs> we were lucky today. Uh, this is um, a summary of what I was talking at some point about the syntax of Drupal migrations is that uh, in the process section, what you do is you have uh, the uh, property like the title or the field, for example, field image. So that's the first part. Then it comes the delta. This is a number. If you have a multi-value field, this would be zero, one, two, and so on. And then you have the subfield. Uh, this subfield is actually easier to see uh, on, you know, with an example. Uh, the, the body, you know, you have the text that you write, but also you have the text format. So that's what I was referring to. Like you have two things. It, uh, it is one single field, but it, internally it stores two pieces of information. One, the text, and two, the format. And so that's what, what we have here. Those are called subfields. And in this case, it will be value. And in this case, it will be um, format. And, you know, I have written, in addition to the 31 days of migration series, like a lot more art of articles about that. And there is one in particular that has been super useful, even for my own reference. Most of the time, uh, I write to myself, to my future self. And this is an... Uh, an article that talks about that, depending on the field type, what subfields are available. And if you want to migrate an address, for example, you have 13 different options. So a reference like this might be useful for those cases. Uh, in addition to the syntax, there is also something called process pipeline. So you might need to apply more than one process plugin that, uh, for one specific operation. And this is how you do it. Uh, you put them like an array one after the other and after the other. Only the first one is going to have the source configuration to read, for example, from your CSV column. And every other one in the pipeline down below, you know, whatever is the output of this plugin is going to uh, be sent as, as the source for this one. Whatever it, this one does is going to be sent as the source for the last one. And whatever this one does is going to be, you know, the final value assigned to the destination field. And these are some examples that, of modules that I use today. Many thanks to all the migrant maintainers and contributors who have, ha, who have helped me along the way. Remember the trainings, the website, the articles, and thank you very much. Uh, uh, that's uh, for providing feedback and testimonials and sending me an email if you have follow-up questions. Thank you to the account for the opportunity to present. Thank you so much for your presentation.